Hello! Today we are going to work yet again with a piece of modern technology that has failed. This is my iMac on which I edit my videos and it's not working anymore. Uh, so if you see this video, <laughs> the repair has been successful. And what happens is that it will shut off uh, in, the, in the middle of working on anything. And completely shut off and the only way to turn it back on uh, is to actually unplug it wait a few seconds replug it and then the start button will work again which tells me uh, that it's most probably the power supply this is uh, the only place in the mac where there is a chip actually two chips uh, that are able to turn the thing off they will latch the air and you can power it back on unless you unpower the chips so i think the diagnostics is fairly uh, no, fairly confidently i think uh, is the power supply uh, and and apple uh, doesn't help either because they assume that you're a complete idiot and uh, would be totally unable to do it yourself and of course we're complete idiots but we think we can do it ourselves. So I had to buy a contraband power supply. This is a Delta, one of the biggest maker of power supplies in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, since you destroy the adhesive, when you remove the screen, you have to buy new, uh, new adhesive strips and uh, iFixit uh, conveniently makes some. The iFixit gives you a little tool to break the glue uh, around the perimeter of the screen. This is Apple design, right? They go so thin, there is no place for screws. <laughs> you have to glue everything. Uh, but man, it looks so beautiful. And there is only one place where you can start is here. Uh, there is a little chamfer for about an inch where you can insert a blade to start working on the thing. And oh no, it goes in very easily. This is way easier than I thought. This little tool is great to go around. Um, oh! Not so much for the tool. <laughs> Just. Well, I guess I didn't pay so much for this thing, but it will work. So around here, you have to be a little careful because there's the uh, there's a camera. So I guess you don't want to go too close to it. Okay, I went around it. It was uh, fairly easy, so now it all goes in. Still not completely loose, so they tell you use a plastic card. And I can feel that it's actually, oh there you go, going all the way inside. Let's see what we have in there. Yeah, I, I thought it wasn't coming off, but it's just that it's heavy. So, yeah, I didn't dare to move the weight, it's very heavy. Ooh, this is nicely done inside. And there are two cables in there, one is a pull, and the other one is a flip up, is it, and pull, okay, easy enough. There shouldn't be anything else, alright, let's see it, right there, alright. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So, it's super neat inside. Here are the speakers. That's why they sound good. They, they, they really engineer the heck out of the thing. The fan, the main board, and the power supply, the disc, which I'll change, by the way. This one is a terabit. I'll put a two terabit in it while I'm at it. I might as well. And back there, our power supply. And I cannot see anything obvious from this side, so I'll have to take it out. Figure out what's happening.
Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. a little clip, so the standard stuff. So here it is, and there is nothing obviously wrong. I'll try to fix it later, see if I can interest Ken into debugging that one. The difficult thing is that I need to reproduce the fault, if it's a random fault, because it would just it will shut off completely randomly, then it's going to be a lot harder to debug. So at least very, well, once you remove the screen, it's extremely serviceable. It's very easy. And it's, it's beautiful hardware, there's no doubt about it. Okay, well, all right. Um, I don't know, what's a piece of footage? And here's the hard drive. All right. Is they had to machine a little groove in the back so they can actually fit the screen in it. It's just the cables are all tucked in perfectly. These are the antenna cable. You can see the micro coax. And there's another one. So it's beautifully done and doesn't cost you much more than a PC. So I'm fairly impressed actually, uh, except that you, uh, if it breaks, then it's no, it's non-standard, it's optimized too much and Apple doesn't help much, but except from that, it's, uh, it's really beautiful hardware that could belong in my collection, actually, I wouldn't mind. So I'm curious to know why it failed or why it's failing, so I, uh, rigged it up and I have it hooked up to my load here and uh, let's turn it on so it's a 25 amp power supply so set it up to 25 amps and sure enough so it's at should be 12 volt but my cable is not quite enough for this so it loses about 0.75 volt but it's, pull, it's pulling 25 volts and I let it for a few minutes um, and nothing happened. Uh, so it seems to be fine, except for the bridge, which was getting a little hot. Everything was pretty cool. My cable is just too thin, so it's getting hot pretty quick. So I need to have a bigger cable. But, uh, well, that's a problem. Uh, if it doesn't fail, under load, I uh, can't reproduce the failure, then uh, uh, we can't debug it. And you'd think you would just be able to replace a SATA disk with another SATA disk of the same RPM and uh, no speed, uh, transfer speed. But no, uh, that would be too easy because Apple has put another app obstacle in their way. They modify the firmware of the disk so it can read the temperature uh, and report it through the SATA interface somehow. So I had to buy a special adapter and the disk I was added from uh, Otherworld Computing. I've bought from them before. They're good Mac suppliers. And they made this beautiful PC looking horrible cable that has a little temperature sensor so you can put any disc in it. And also one more thing, when the Mac is on you can't hear the disc at all, even if you, you think it's an SSD even if it's a normal disc. And uh, I realize now that it's because of two reasons. First, they must have chosen the disc specially uh, so it's not loud, because probably it's been selected for that. And then it's not mounted like a regular disc. It has those little special screws or studs which you have to take away from the disc. Oops. Stay with me. There you go. And transfer to the new disc. And that goes into this, which has little rubber grommets to isolate the vibration. As, as uh, ma maddening it is that you know, Apple doesn't support you if you want to repair stuff yourself. It's such so refreshing to see something engineered in the details. 
then you have to stick the sensor, temperature sensor on the casting of the disc itself like somewhere here and as they say you put the cable so it arranges neatly on the, <laughs> the side of your Mac but <laughs> so now I feel bad yet made that special beautiful connector so it would be absolutely perfect and have this horrible kludge in there no Steve Jobs must not be happy up there but the kludge should work all right Then you put the strips back on where this makes sense. So strip that. Try to put the darn. I think this one is smaller. There we go. Oh, this is all cord that sticks and stretches at the same time, which makes it hard to get it perfect. All right. But before I glue it all back up, I'm going to connect it and try it out. Okay, now it should not boot because I don't have anything in the disc. But I should get an Apple logo at least, if I can find the start button. Here we go. Ooh, no, it's not happy. So... I have to do my connector stuff here. Okay, try number two after having replugged the finer of the two connectors. Level the power supply works. And that's no good. Okay, so screen is working except for those lines. And it can't find a boot disk which is normal so hmm I'm a bit afraid my uh, dark or white line is a bigger problem than it seems uh, no playing with the contacts didn't do it and I am becoming worried that it's something that happened to those flex connections right here that connect every single pixel line to the driver board those are lines next to each other um. You put the card back and then try to press on, on these delicately on these uh, bands and see if it gets rid of a problem. Try it again. With the. Yeah, there is my line, so it's on. Which connector? This one? This one, yeah, it doesn't do anything. Nope, that's all fine. And if it was something here, if I would just push it, it would fix it. So it's easier on the other side of the screen. And I don't know how that could have possibly become damaged. Okay, I think uh, I'll admit defeat. I have been vanquished by the gods of modern technology here. Uh, it's something wrong in the screen itself. That didn't like being taken away from its frame. And so I'll at least put it back together to see if it works with its new power supply. 
and disk if it does it's worth buying a new screen if it doesn't well it was a good Mac until now but it's not anymore Thing. And we have a semi repaired Mac. So the Mac powered backup, I put it from the carbon copy uh, clone that I had made for my desk USB, one terabyte, and it uh, booted fine. Alright, clone, clone over this one, and then clone. And then if it doesn't die during the clone process, that's already a, a good sign because before the, the, the power supply would give up. So I have now put beefier cables uh, and they don't heat up anymore. Um, so I'm going to leave it long term for 25 amps and see if it goes in thermal shutdown. All right, I still can't make this thing fail. It's still good. Uh, cables are still okay. 25 amps, and it's been going on for a couple hours now. Uh, so, which is perplexing because my Mac was not staying on for a couple hours before. Let's see if the the Mac with the new supply uh, is still on. It's been uh, over two hours and it certainly wouldn't last two hours before. And... Yup. So do we good? Two hours, 22 minutes and it's just restoring on the new hard disk. So this is interesting. We'll see if uh, I can edit the video on it. Um, but obviously the power supply that we took out from the Mac and that was powering down the Mac works downstairs but it didn't work in the Mac so it's more subtle uh, it's an interaction between the Mac and the power supply I would suspect um, maybe the power supply uh, getting too hot and the Mac shutting it down uh, but on its own it's fine uh, so maybe something as degraded and could be something as silly as a thermal grease that has just dried up uh, or something like that. Uh, but visibly this new power supply works in the back and the other one didn't but I can't make the other one fail. So a very strange problem. Either we fix the power supply problem, we fix the disk problem and darn we broke the screen. So, yeah, uh, I've been vanquished by new technology here. Okay, so I'll get the new screen and next time it breaks, I just buy a new one. Bye-bye.